planes, destroy airplanes, kill innocent Americans, drill a hole into an American military man's knee when he was being held captive and couldn't fight back or struggle. And they always stood up and bragged about it. They were always happy to tell us how they made us suffer. Bin Laden didn't take credit for this. And what's that got to do with anything? Well, I want to show you a couple of things. You go back to 1993, Waco, Texas. Janet Reno got on television and said, I take credit for the burning of that uh, Branch Davidian church. Responsibility ends with me. She admitted she was the guilty murderess of 80 people, 80 Americans, in their country church building, including a dozen babies. Why didn't somebody indict her for murder? They didn't have to do that. If they wanted the leader, he was at the laundromat the day or two before that, and the FBI walked right by him. They could have picked him up. The day before they started that fiasco, that leader of that uh, Branch Davidian walked right by the command post on the highway doing his jog. They could have just grabbed him. And why did the FBI keep the media back two miles? Because he said he had lots of ammunition, illegal weapons. Well, when that thing burned, we didn't see bullets flying off helter-skelter like the 4th of July. Duh! Did the FBI lie to us? Maybe. Maybe it was a test of the criminal elements within our federal government to see how much America would put up with. Now, fast forward. And you come to... Oklahoma City, they want you to believe that an ammonium nitrate bomb sheared concrete, steel reinforced concrete pillars, but didn't take the stucco off the pillars, the, uh, the easy stuff that you could easily scrape off with a hammer. Hoppy Heidelberg was in that grand jury. He says the FBI railroaded Timothy McVeigh. I want you to watch this tape. This is William Wagner, your host and producer of On Second Thought. We're here with Happy Heidelberg, a former member of the Federal Grand Jury. Is that correct? Federal Grand Jury, right. The Federal Grand Jury in Oklahoma City. Right. And you were one of, what, two dozen members? Uh, there were 23 members and four alternates. And everything was going fine, and you were on that until you asked a question of the judge in writing. Is that well, everything wasn't fine. It was uh, it was bad from the first day when they told us that we weren't going to be allowed to question the uh, witnesses directly. And I knew better than that because I'd read the manual, and I knew that I w had the right to do that. And so I told them politely at first that uh, I can't live with that. I mean, it's my right to uh, question these witnesses, and I consider it my duty, and I'm going to do it. And they had a conference, and then they came back... Uh, uh, to me and said, can we compromise? Uh, will you tell us what you're going to ask in advance? And I was trying, I shouldn't have cooperated, I should have told him no, but I was trying to be a nice guy. So I said, yeah, I don't mind telling you what I'm going to ask in advance. And uh, I found out later the reason for that, and I found out that didn't work because then they would take my questions out before the witness came in outside and tell him what I'm going to ask him. So I ended that doing that when I got some hostile witnesses on the stand, I tricked them. I told them one question and then, then I asked the rest of my questions. So did you ever get to ask Timothy McVeigh anything? No, he was never brought in. No. So what was the job of your grand jury to do? Well, the job, the job was to indict uh, whomever the Justice Department told us to. That was our job. It's what they told us. I mean, that's not what I consider the job of a grand jury. Didn't that manual they gave you say to also exonerate well, private protect citizens? citizens? Yeah, I mean, your job is to, to uh, assist the government in prosecuting actual criminals. You indict them so they can go ahead and prosecute them. But if, in your opinion, the guy's, uh, there's no crime or the guy's not guilty of the crime or something like that, then you don't indict him. You do what's called a no-bill. And then the, that, in that way, you protect citizens from unwarranted prosecution by the government. Was the prosecution interested in you doing anything in that latter regard? Oh, of course not. No, they, they didn't intend for me to actually do the job, just to sit there and then vote at the end the way they told me to. That was what they wanted me to do. And they made that pretty clear. Made you? that very clear, yes. They frowned and fidgeted and thumbed their pencils on the table. And while I was asking, anytime I was doing anything or speaking, they were doing things to disrupt it, you know. But that was after you were impaneled. Right. Now, right. some people might think you were an attorney or a 
some, uh, what was your occupation when no, they first called you? Well, I, I, I raised their bred race horses. I have a horse farm in, in Oklahoma City or at the edge of Oklahoma City, a little town called Blanchard, and I raised race horses. And so on my questionnaire, I just put down farmer. And okay. I, apparently that sounded uh, innocuous to them, and they decided to uh, allow me to participate. And so you got impaneled by Judge Farrell? No, I, it's uh, Russell. Oh, Russell, Judge yeah. Russell. Right. So he impaneled you. Now you're impaneled as a federal grand jury investigating the Oklahoma City bombing? Right. And what was the name of that federal building? The Murrah, M-U-R-R-A-H, I think, the Murrah building. And in your opinion, from what you saw while you were on the federal grand jury and what you have come to know, is it possible that all that bomb damage could have been done by the single truck that they claimed, Timothy McVeigh, uh, used to blow up that building? No, it's not possible. When you apply the applicable physics and mathematics to it, it's not possible for a 4,800-pound ammonium nitrate bomb or a 7,000-pound ammonium nitrate bomb or even a much larger bomb to have done that damage because ammonium nitrate is, uh, by nature, it is a low-velocity, low-brisance explosive and is completely unsuitable for that kind of operation. So you're telling us that he didn't blow that building up by himself, or he didn't? Well, have he, didn't part of it. <laughs> he didn't blow up the building. He didn't blow up the building. He didn't blow up the building. He may have set off some kind of bomb, but it's not what blew up the building. So something else blew up the building. Yeah, charges inside the building blew and up the building. And the American people have never been told the truth then. Uh, well, of course not. No. So you're sitting on this thing, and you get to thinking about the physics of what sodium nitrate, which is a uh, slow velocity. Explosive. Low velocity. Low brisance explosive, right? And they won't let you question the witnesses directly, which is your duty and your right. right? Well, they asked me not to. Uh, I did anyway, and that was a pr the basis of our first conflict. We had many conflicts. So then you wrote Judge. I wrote Judge Russell a letter uh, demanding that he allow me to call, which the grand jury's rights to call witnesses. We're supposed to be able to call our own witnesses, and I wanted to call certain witnesses. I wrote him a letter and told him that and listed the witnesses I wanted called, and the letter I got back said, you're basically, you're fired, and, if you, and, and you go to jail for six months for every time you speak out. And so the judge, actually, Russell, he wrote you a letter, and it was a one-paragraph letter, basically saying you are immediately dismissed right. and don't open your mouth. And keep your mouth shut or you go to jail, that's right. Did that seem like American due process to you? Well, not quite, no. I didn't think that I should have been fired for doing my job, no. I mean, I, I, you know, it's okay if I don't do my job, I expect to be fired. But that's the first time I've ever been fired, fired. for doing my job. Yeah, yeah, right. Do you think even the people, that, the, the victims, all those parents that had their children killed, they really believe Timothy McVeigh was the sole Most of them do. Most of them do. Do you think because any of them have an inkling that there's something well, else yeah, going sure. on? Well, of course some of them do. I mean, I have a good friend who was in the bill, and he's a victim, and he knows the truth. And then the uh, the Edie, Edie uh, and what did he do about it when he knew the truth? It took him a while to know the truth. He's now cooperating with myself and Charles Key and other investigators investigating the building. But uh, he didn't know what to do about it at first because, first of all, he was injured. I mean, it was a while before he recovered from his injuries. And it was a process, a slow process of him putting two and two together to figure out that what the government was telling him happened to him wasn't the truth. So it took him a while. He, that's why he didn't speak out early on. He, he didn't know what to say. He didn't know the truth. But he, he does now. And, of course, there were some families. Uh, 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 Glenn Wilburn's probably the most prominent. Uh, his grandsons were killed in the explosion, and he's an accountant. So he's intelligent. He wasn't a government employee. And he figured out right quick something was wrong. He never did figure out exactly what was wrong. But he got close enough to it that they killed him. They killed him? Yes, they did. Who do you think killed him? Uh, a CIA operative. And what year did he die? Well, that's a good question. Uh, happened in 90, 97, around 97, 97, something like that. So he eventually, what he did wrong, it was okay to, to complain and ask questions and all that, but he filed a lawsuit, and they didn't like that. He, he filed a lawsuit? He filed a lawsuit against Timothy McVeigh, which gave him legal standing to request documents uh -huh. that the government didn't want exposed. And so he suddenly found himself dead. Right. Has anybody tried to explain his death? Oh, he just got cancer. Oh. It was nothing, you know. Just like the, the Dr. Chumley just died. His plane just crashed. I mean, all the deaths in Oklahoma City, there were suicides. I mean, uh, Sergeant Yakey, the police officer, uh, first of all,
cut himself 13, cut his throat wide ear to ear, bled to death, then walked a quarter of a mile and shot himself with a gun that wasn't his service revolver, which they never found. I mean, it, it, it goes crazy suicides you read about, you know. There's a lot of them in Oklahoma City for there for a while until they got... It sort of reminds you of uh, President Clinton's personal attorney who committed suicide and threw himself in a public park. Vince Foster, same kind of deal, yeah. 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 It leaves you wondering how people can commit suicide and then toss their own body someplace far away. And the gun's gone, you know. The gun's and, gone. Yeah, they, they never found the guns. Yeah. Not around. Well, when the FBI showed up later, they later found the gun. Once, the, but when the local police were out there investigating, there wasn't any gun. Oh. And when the FBI got there uh, hours later, they found the gun. Yeah. Do you think that the average American, who's not from Oklahoma City, that doesn't have the chance to rub elbows with you, will ever know the truth? Uh, no, I don't think the average American will ever know. They haven't found out the truth about Kennedy yet, so why would they ever know the truth about Oklahoma City? Well, that's right. We all know that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. I mean, acted we all alone. know that. The Warren Commission said so. I mean, it fired three shots, but the audio recording shows four. Yeah. So, and and then there's the doctor who came out with this book, and and we all know that story. And I think you're right. Most Americans still think Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone assassin, and uh, the evidence just doesn't seem to indicate that this seems yeah. to be kind of a similar pattern here well the same operation it was the the it was planned and carried out by the same people so yes i mean their theory is if it ain't broke don't fix it so whatever keeps working whatever type of operation works they do it the same way every time well what was amazing how lee got assassinated before he even had a chance to talk to a judge in any great length or an attorney or get to trial and then the guy that killed him dies from illness. Well, he got the same cancer that George Glenn Wilbur got. <laughs> Very fast-acting. They call this G-cancer yeah, government it's cancer. Fa it's fast-acting cancer. They don't last long at all when they get this kind of cancer. Yeah, it's amazing yeah. how that works. Yeah. Um, so you came out with this story before they could silence you, right? Well, yeah. Uh, when I got the judge's letter on a Thursday and I called the, one of the local TV stations uh, when I got the letter out of the mail and they were out there uh, within a, about an hour or so to do a TV show, and then that went out on the AP wire, and it was just, it was, but was it nation, the next day my picture's in the papers, San Angelo, Texas, all over the United States, and then, uh, But got, didn't someone call you before the reporter even got oh, there? Oh, yeah, the government called me and said, there's a reporter on your way out to your farm, we don't want you to talk to him. I said, well, how do you know the reporter's on the way to my farm? And, and uh, the guy that was calling me, he was uh, with the Justice Department, he said, well, the FBI is here, okay? So I knew then that somebody's phones was tapped. Now, isn't it illegal to tap somebody's phone without a judge's order? Don't they have to have an order? Yeah, but it's common. Uh, Southwestern Bell, any of the large uh, baby Bell phones, uh, uh, they don't worry about it. Yeah, so the FBI calls them and says, we want this, they give it they to give them. They give it to them. They and tap them, yeah. They tap phones. Actually, what they did, they tapped the little girl, the reporter, her f home phone was tapped. So when she called her husband to tell him she wouldn't be home and told him where she was going, that's how they found out where she was going. Is this still one nation under God, Mr. Heidelberg? Uh, well, I don't think since prayer was thrown out of school, that pretty much answered that question, I think. If there's anything we could do, what could an average American do who's sitting out there in Lompoc, California, or San Inez, or Solvang, or Santa Maria, or this sometimes gets picked up on the internet, and they, they catch the show, and they're saying, well, wait a minute, something went wrong there, and, I, in, and Heidelberg's trying to blow the whistle on them, and they, I never really heard this story, because there's a lot of people, including myself, never heard your name before April of 2001. What could they do? Where could they go? Well, the Bible has the answer. The instructions are to any Christian, and the words are study to show thyself approved. I mean, they need to figure this out for themselves. They need to do some homework. Don't take my word for it. Figure don't it out take for your you. No, don't take my word for it. Figure it out for yourself. So they need they need to research, and then the scripture: "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free." Yeah, but you got to learn the truth, and it's, nobody's going to hand it to you on a platter. You got to figure it out for yourself. And even if they do give it to you on a platter, it's not the same. You won't believe it. I mean, I can tell anybody the truth that wants to hear it, but it's not the same if they aren't prepared to hear it. If they haven't already done some homework, they won't believe anything I say. Because the truth, and, 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 and I know the reason for the saying, you know the saying that truth is, is much more bizarre than fiction, and it is. I mean, the truth is uh, 
much more unbelievable. I and mean, if I was making this story up, I'd make it more believable. <laughs> <laughs> and probably make more money doing